when it comes to corn rootworm insecticides, we're getting a lot more interest and a lot more questions in these over the last couple of years because a lot of people are going away from traits. Many farmers are trying to cut expenses, which sounds great when you're buying your seed. Oh, I save money on my seed by not getting the trait. But let's not forget, corn rootworm insecticide does cost some money. Now, yes, you can skip the insecticide, you can skip the trait, but if you have insect damage, well, you save money up front, but you lost yield on the other side. So did you really come out ahead or not? That's a good question. Well, and it's a question that you have to answer before the season starts, because if you don't put these insecticides out at planting time, you can't really use them later. There's no rescue treatment for corn rootworm, and we know we've got corn rootworm issues out there. This year I was out in the extreme western corn belt, and I, I was at a seed plot, and I was looking at different hybrids, and the farmer from across the road came, came over and said, what are you looking at? What are you seeing over here? And I, I said, well, I'm looking at different corn hybrids, and, and he goes, yeah, I don't need that rootworm trade. I don't have any rootworms. And I grabbed the next ear of corn. There were three rootworm beetles on it. And there are rootworm beetles flying everywhere. And I said, well, I don't know about you, but there's certainly a rootworm problem here. And I don't think these beetles just stay in one field. And in fact, they don't. They do move around a little bit. If you've got corn in your area, chances are there are some corn rootworm beetles flying. They're, they lay eggs in the fall. Then these larvae will attack your corn in the early to mid season next year. Crop rotation can certainly help, but like Darren said, these adult beetles can move around from field to field. So even if you are in a corn soybean rotation, if there is just a lot of corn in your area, you're at risk. Now going into 2019, many farmers I've talked to are considering some continuous corn acres. We're gonna raise some continuous corn acres on our farm too. Well there, you absolutely have to make sure you're addressing rootworms, either with trait or insecticide, and in some cases both. So let's talk specifically about which insecticides are best for your farm. When you think about the dry insecticides, you've got to have the right application equipment to get this done. But assuming that you do, we're looking at products like Force and Aztec and Smart Choice, all good options for you, all pretty effective at controlling corn rootworm, getting you, I would say, 90% control, not 100%, but 90%. Now you say, well, wait a second, that's not as good as those traits are. That's true, they're not as good as the stack traits like smart stacks, for example, but they also get the secondary insects and we're seeing more wire worms, white grubs would be another problem, but seed corn beetles, seed corn maggots, we can wipe those out with these planting time insecticides. Yeah, and there really aren't BT traits for many of those insects that Darren just mentioned. So there definitely are advantages to having insecticide out there. We love Force, Aztec, Smart Choice, the dries are the way to go if you want the very best control. If you want a lesser price though, you could use something like Capture LFR. That's still a good insecticide. It's not gonna be quite as good as the dries, but it's pretty close. And with the LFR formulation, that's liquid fertilizer ready, you could combine that with your starter fertilizer. So in other words, you get to save money on an application system and you can throw it right in the tank with the liquid fertilizer. Well, it's a really convenient way to get an insecticide out there. And in fact, there are formulations now like Temetry and Manticore that you get a fungicide and insecticide all together that you could put right in with your fertilizer potentially as you're planting the crops. You could get multiple jobs done at the same time. And that is a nice added feature when you can get the fungicide and insecticide together. All right, the only thing that we'd caution you on is do a jar test first. We always worry about mixing, but in most cases it works pretty well. One other thing we probably should mention too, as you're choosing between these products, look at the modes of action in each of them. Now we talked about capture as a, an option as a liquid. Well, that's a pyrethroid. We look at force on the dry side, that's a pyrethroid. Aztec and Smart Choice both have multiple modes of action in them. So if you say, well, I want at least two modes of action, great, choose Aztec or choose Smart Choice. But if you say, you know what, I don't really care about that so much, as long as it's going to be an effective product for me, Force and Capture are both still really good options. And when it comes to safety, they're pretty good in terms of insecticides. The last thing we get questions on is placement. Where should I put this, in furrow, band, or T-band? Uh, T-band, by the way, is kind of a combination, a little bit band and a little bit in furrow. Personally, for rootworm, I prefer T-band. If I'm just going after below ground pests that are going to attack the seed only, like let's say it's 
seed corn maggot, seed corn beetle, uh, maybe wire worm, then I would say inferro is a better choice. If I'm just going after cutworm, I would say band is a better choice. So it just depends on which insecticide you're using. You got to follow the label. Some products are not labeled for all those application methods. And then it depends on which pest you're going after, which pest is number one for you. Again, for me, if it's a rootworm, I'm probably going T band. Well, protecting your corn crop from insects is certainly a big deal, but don't forget about weed control. We'll show you how to stop our Weed of the Week coming up next.